Okay, now that we understand variables, arrays, and loops, let's put all this programming together to do something mathematical. In particular, let's see how we can use what we have learned to draw a graph. Let's start by considering the graph shown here and how we would store the information that is in this graph using variables. Each dot in the graph is a pair of scalars, i.e. the x-coordinate of the dot and the y-coordinate of the dot. We could thus store all the x-coordinates in an array called x-vals. The x-coordinate of the first point would be stored in x-vals 0, the x-coordinate of the third point in x-vals 2, the x-coordinate of the sixth point in x-vals 5, and so on as shown here. The y-coordinates could be similarly stored in an array called y-vals. The coordinates of the first point would thus be x vals 0, y vals 0. The coordinates of the 11th point are x vals 10, y vals 10. And the coordinates of the final point are, are x vals 14, y vals 14. To create a graph then, all we need to do is provide an array containing all the x coordinates and a second array containing all the corresponding y coordinates. We can thus create the plot shown at the top of the command. This is done using the Python commands shown at the top of the slide here. The critical command here is the plt plot command, which is shown in bold. This command takes two arrays in input. The first is the list of x coordinates we have just discussed. And the second is the corresponding list of y coordinates that we've discussed. The final command here just tells the graphing program to draw a black circle at each point. As you get more comfortable with Python, you can learn to, to use this command to draw other kinds of symbols. For example, lines, stars and all sorts of things. For now though, black circles will do. With that in mind, let's consider the full program for generating the graph shown on this slide. The graph here shows the first 15 elements in the Fibonacci sequence on the y-axis. The x values these are plotted at are the positions of these terms in the series. The first x coordinate is thus 1, the second is 2, the third is 3, and so on. In the code shown here, the first part sets the values in the two lists that are to be plotted. This code starts by creating two arrays, x vals and y vals, each of which has 15 elements. The first and second elements in x vals are then set equal to 1 and 2, while the first two elements of y vals are set equal to the first two numbers of the Fibonacci sequence, which are both 1. There then follows a loop to set the other elements of x vals and y vals. This loop differs from the loops you've written previously, as by writing range 215 in place of range 15, we ensure that i equals 2 on the first pass through the loop, i equals 3 on the second pass, i equals 4 on the third pass, and so on. In the first part pass through the loop, we thus set x vals, equals, x vals 2 to 3, the second pass sets x vals 3 equal to 4, and so on. Y vals i, meanwhile, is set equal to the sum of y vals, y vals i minus 2 and y vals i minus 1, as that is how we calculate the terms in the Fibonacci sequence. The code finishes with the plt plot command that we have just learned about, which draws our graph. The x coordinates are contained in the array called x vals while the y-coordinates, which are the Fibonacci numbers, are in y-vals. Hopefully, that is relatively clear. See if you can now use this idea to draw your own graph of a different series. Good luck!